Okay, so as I said last time, we are going to be going through examples each and every time with this. We're not going to just go through all the material and then come back to the examples. So let's look at this right here. What we have is a motor, and it winds in the cable at a constant acceleration. Okay, that's probably going to be important here, such that my 20 kilogram crate moves a distance of 6 meters in 3 seconds, starting from rest. We know that the value of the kinetic friction is 0 0.3. What do we want to find? Well, we want to find the tension that's developed in the cable during this. We've got a constant acceleration, which means it's pulling with some sort of force. So, I want you to solve this. I want you to try it on your own. But as always, I'm going to give you a little plan here to help you out. Now, the plan is, first, draw a free body and kinetic diagram of the crate. Then, using our kinematic equations, determine the acceleration of the crate. Because even though it said it's constant, it doesn't actually tell you what value it is. And finally, apply the equations of motion, that's that whole force equals mass times acceleration thing, to determine the cable tension. So go forth, try it out, and then come back and let me know how you did. Just be quiet about it because, you know, you're talking to your computer again. And we're not Skyping, this is just a video, I can't hear you. But if you want to, you can literally call me and tell me how it went. I'd be happy with that. So, okay, enough of my silliness. Go forth, try it out. Three, two, one, and you're back. So let's see how it went. Let's see how it went for you. So first, I gotta draw that free body and kinematic diagram of the crate. And it's gonna look something like this. So I've got a weight, which is gonna be 20, which is the kilograms, times gravity, which is 9.81, pointing down. I'm gonna have the normal force from the floor pressing upon the crate. I'm gonna have friction, which is gonna be resisting the motion of the crate. I have a tension pulling on it. Okay, so how many unknowns do I have? I have one, two unknowns right here. So I should be able to solve for this and should be able to solve for the acceleration. Now, one way to make life a lot simpler on you is if you see there's a lot of forces going along a particular direction, um, then use it. So it made a lot more sense for me to make the x-axis up the plane rather than to keep it horizontal. Um, just I didn't have to do as many, um, didn't have to break as many forces into components. So use what you can do, uh, do to make things simple. And this is going to be a very common case when you have something going up a plane or going up a, um, a ramp or down a ramp. Now let's use our kinematic equations to figure out what the acceleration is. So we know that um, it went a certain distance and a certain time. It went 6 meters and 3 seconds with a constant acceleration. That's important. So from this, we can go to our kinematic equations, starting out at S, e S naught equals 0, and we can solve. So it started from rest, so V naught is also 0. So all we have left is 1 half A, 3 squared. And if we solve for that, we get that A is equal to 1.333 meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration and it's constant. Now I can apply the equations of motion. I come back here. I already knew what the forces in the y direction were. So I had my 20, I have my gravity, cos 30 is going to be equal to my normal force. So normal force was 169.9 newtons. And so the force is x is going to be equal to mass times acceleration because it is not going to be stationary here. Only in my y direction do we have all of our forces summing to zero. In the x direction, all the forces are going to sum an equal mass times acceleration. So that would be equivalent to the tension minus 20 times gravity times sine of 30 minus 0 0.3 in. And that's going to be equal to 20 times acceleration. And I plug all that in there, and I get that my tension would have to be 176 newtons. 176 newtons. So be very careful about this because you might look at this, let's see, right here, and think to yourself, well, I've got two unknowns. I can solve it because I've got two equations. But you got to remember that unlike statics, everything doesn't suddenly equal zero. No, it's only equal to zero if it doesn't move in that direction. And this guy, definitely moving and accelerating. So that should be it for this time. It is. So. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you all next time as we jump into our normal and tangential coordinate system. Have a wonderful day.
Goodbye.